Water. Water has a significant role to play in the making of concrete. It is required in mixing of fresh concrete and the needed for curing of hardened concrete. For proper strength development and durability of concrete, it is necessary that the water used for mixing and curing is free from impurities such as oils, acids, alkalis, salts, sugar and organic materials. Water that is fit for human consumption that is potable water is generally considered to be suitable for concreting. Page 14 of IS 456-2000 gives recommendation on quality of water to be used for concreting. Important points to consider for water are number one pH value of water should not be less than 6. Second point, in water, sulfates content is limited to 400 mg per liter while chloride content is restricted to 500 mg per liter in reinforced concrete but in plain concrete it is 2000 mg per liter. Now, here is the question why chloride content restriction is limited less in reinforced concrete compared to plain concrete. The answer is steel reinforcing bars embedded in concrete are prone to corrosion in the presence of chloride. Hence, code imposes a strict control on chloride in reinforced concrete compared to plain concrete. Water in a concrete mix is required not only for hydration with cement but also walkability. Walkability may be defined as that property of the fresh concrete or mortar which determines the ease and homogeneity with which it can be mixed, placed, compacted and finished. Too much water reduces the concrete strength, whereas too little will make the concrete unworkable. Now the next question is why too much water will reduce concrete strength. Addition of more water will allow water to take place the wide space between aggregates rather than cement paste. This water evaporates subsequently leaving behind voids which adversely affects strength, impermeability, etc. Moreover, there is the danger of segregation of grout. Grout is cement plus water. In a very wet mix, in addition to bleeding, which is tendency of excess water to rise to the surface of fresh concrete mix, as the solid constituents settle downwards. The primary factor that influence strength of concrete is water-cement ratio. What is water-cement ratio? It is defined as the ratio of the mass of free water to that of cement in a mix. Please remember free water is excluding that absorbed by the aggregate. Now we'll know in brief about Abraham's law. It states compressive strength of hardened concrete is inversely proportional to the water cement ratio provided the mix is of walkable consistency. It can be observed from the above graph for full compacted concrete with increase in water cement ratio, compressive strength is reduced. A reduction in the water cement ratio generally results in an increased quality of concrete in terms of density, strength, impermeability, reduced shrinkage and creep etc. Shrinkage and creep of concrete will be discussed in a separate session. Water is also used for curing of concrete. 
Curing is the process of preventing the loss of moisture from the concrete whilst maintaining a satisfactory temperature regime. This can be done either by moist curing, accelerated curing or membrane curing. Most general type of curing is moist curing. Moist curing aims to keep the concrete as nearly saturated as possible at normal temperature. This is achieved by continually spraying water or by ponding or by covering the concrete with a layer of any kind of sacking which is kept wet. Now the question comes that for how many days moist curing must be done? You will get this answer from clause number 13.5.1 page number 27 of IS 456-2000. The court specifies the duration as at least 7 days from the date of placing of concrete in case of ordinary Portland cement under normal weather conditions and at least 10 days when dry and hot weather conditions are encountered. When mineral admixture or blended cements are used, the recommended minimum period is 10 days, which should preferably be extended to 14 days or more. Now, let us learn about admixtures. Admixtures are additives that are introduced in a concrete mix to modify the properties of concrete in its fresh and hardened state. Many proprietary products as admixtures are currently available for concrete. Their desirable effects are advertised in the market. Scientifically, the desirable effects should be examined and also the undesirable effect must be reported before they are used in concrete. Clause 5.5.3, page number 15 of IS 456-2000 recommends that the workability, compressive strength, and the slump loss of concrete with and without the use of admixtures shall be established during the trial mix before the use of admixtures. Also, the use of admixtures should not impair durability and increase the risk of corrosion to reinforcement. Admixtures are either chemical or mineral in form. They are now being increasingly used in concrete production, particularly when there is an emphasis on either high strength concrete or high performance concrete. The use of chemical admixtures is inevitable in the production of ready mixed concrete, which involve transportation over large distances of fresh concrete that is manufactured under controlled conditions at a batching plant. Some of the more important chemical admixtures are accelerators. These are chemicals to accelerate the hardening or the development of early strength of concrete. These are generally used when urgent repairs are undertaken or while concreting in cold weather. Next is retarders. These are chemicals to retard the setting of concrete and thereby also to reduce the generation of heat. These are generally used in hot weather concreting and in ready mixed concrete. Next is plasticizer or water reducers. They are chemicals to improve plasticity in the fresh concrete. These are mainly used for achieving higher strength by reducing the water cement ratio or for improving workability to facilitate placement of concrete in locations that are not easily accessible. Next is super plasticizers or high range water reducers. They are chemicals that have higher dosage level and are supposedly superior to conventional water reducers. They are used for the same purposes as water reducers. In other words, to produce high strength concrete or to produce flowing concrete. Air entraining agents. 
These are organic compounds such as animal, vegetable fats and oils, wood resins, which introduce discrete and microscopic air bubbles cavities that occupy up to 5% of the volume of concrete. These are mainly used for protecting concrete from damage due to alternate freezing and thawing. Mineral admixtures are used either as partial replacement of cement or in combination with cement at the time of mixing to modify the properties of concrete or to achieve economy. Pozolakas are the most used admixtures in concrete. Pozolans are materials containing amorphous silica which in finely divided form and in the presence of water chemically react with calcium hydroxide at ordinary temperature to form compounds possessing cementitious property. Clause number 5.2, page number 13, IS 456 2000 permits its use, provided uniform blending with cement is ensured. Few examples of pozzolanic materials are fly ash, ground granulated blast furnace slag, silica fuel, rice husk ash, etc. These pozzolanas are industrial waste products whose disposal raise environmental concerns. Their use in making concrete reduces its impact on environment. So its use should be encouraged more in concrete.